What's up gamers? Welcome back to another exciting Apex Legends video. Today I'm going to share with you my tips for ranked before the end of the split in Season 8. Let's do it. Oh, baby. All right, guys, ranked over the seasons has been increasingly difficult because of the players you just keep getting better and better. But Respawn has changed the game this season, so here are my tips to help you rank up as high as possible before the end of the split. We're going to talk about the following. Drop location in early fights, playing for position, setting up, being patient, and your team composition. Starting with drop locations in early fights, first let me say this, guys. This is going to apply to more teams rather than solo queuing, but you can use this even if you're solo or duo queuing. So landing at a location is very important inside Apex Legends, and at the pro level you see it all the time. Teams select a location to land at and that's their location. You want to pick a location you like or your team likes and stick to it. That means landing there every single game no matter what. The reason you want to do this is one, you're going to become very familiar with the location and you're going to know the best spots to land at that location and where the best loot spawns there. For example, if you like to land in artillery and you know a purple shield spawns in one of the buildings, then you want to land at artillery, land in that building and get the purple armor every game. Two, you're going to learn the best ways to fight at the location if a team challenges you. Using the terrain, the high ground, cover and the best building so you can always give your team the best chance to win in those early fights three is going to be learning the rotations out of the location depending on where the zone pulls this becomes easier and easier the more you play for example if the zone pulls towards swamps side of the map for me if you're landing at water treatment or now caustic's paradise or whatever it's called we will always rotate to the small village below overlook and then onto repulsor you will begin to learn these rotations without even thinking about it based on where the zone moves. Now, if the zone does move, let's say, over to a runoff, then you're going to easily just rotate into bunker or, an, or, con, or containment. A place like that just makes the rotations a whole lot easier. Now, the last thing that goes into your location, and this is my tip here, guys, is picking a location that more often than not has either a rescan beacon, a crafting station, or both. A lot of this depends on your team's playstyle and team comp. My team comp always had Bloodhound on it, and we always valued the zone information over anything else, so we always wanted to know where the zone was going to be to have the best positions possible we could. Another way to use this is if you really want to have, you know, shield batteries and med kits, having a crafting station really puts you ahead of the game as far as your next upcoming fight when you have these kind of resources. So I always advise, you know, looking at the map and seeing a location that you like and always analyzing, hey, how often do I drop here that we have a rescan beacon, a crafting station, or both? This is going to help you out a lot when it comes to gaining RP inside ranked. My next tip for ranked is early fights for KP. What I mean by this is either fighting a team that challenges you at your location right off drop or shortly after that. And after that only means to the next possible POI that's next to where you landed. Anything outside of that besides a third party is too much of a risk and will most likely leave you eliminated from the game. Now note, when you take an early fight, on average, everyone on your team should come out with 2 KP each, which will make playing for the end game a lot easier. Now if you don't have an early game fight, then avoid fights as much as possible unless you feel confident your team can take that fight and you can finish the fight fast to prevent getting third party. Now I'm not saying you have to never fight inside Apex Legends ranked, but as we all know the games and teams live and die by third parties. So once you have reached the mid game inside of a ranked game, the map is too small and at the higher level lobbies the teams are just too good to take on you know, these these fights, these first fights that you take without getting third partied and getting eliminated. It's very difficult to fight in the mid game inside of ranked in Apex. Now on to tip number two, playing for position. I see many gamers and players complain about getting that they can't get out of a tier. Well, a big reason for this guys is taking too many fights, taking bad fights, 
and more importantly, taking fights in the mid game like we just discussed, which is a recipe to get third or fourth party. So rotate early, establish the best position and rotate there. This means always using the map and figuring out which buildings, rooftops, high grounds, areas, depending on where the zone pulls, will be the best position for the current zone. The current zone, guys. So you have to analyze this every single time the zone is remade throughout the game as you get further and further towards the end game. The biggest reason you see so many teams near the end game in pro tournaments is because they value position over everything else. Now, on to tip number three, setting up. This is a topic I think a lot of players don't understand when it comes to setting up. If you have a defensive legend like Caustic or Watson or even Rampart on a very rare end, or if you have no defensive legend, you want to lock down your building or area with traps. And a lot of players get this part, and then they sit in a corner hiding and waiting for the zone to move. This is wrong, guys. What you want to do is always be moving and scouting the area that you're trying to hold. Why? Because this accomplishes two things. One, you're going to gather much needed information on the other teams, where they are, where they might be rotating to, or where they are rotating to, and which legends are on those opposing teams. And continuously plan out your next move from that position. Two, you're going to take long range shots to level up your shields. And when you're constantly moving on your setup spot, other teams will see you. This is okay. You don't want teams rotating to your location because they think it's an empty building and you're not prepared to fight. Plus, if you're constantly moving and you see a team trying to rotate into the zone or trying to take your position, you all you have to do is just take shots to prevent this and get some easy KP. Those teams are going to be exposed while you're set up in a great position to just earn those KP, even if it's one. Now, if you're hiding in a corner, you won't be able to gather this valuable information and put your team in the best opportunity to win. So when it comes to setting up, you want to lock down an area and continuously move throughout that area looking at every single direction that you can and gather as much information as possible. On to tip number four is being patient, guys. I've seen too many players that are so focused on KP opposed to winning the game, they get eliminated. Yes, KP is important and being patient and consistent in the game is even more important. What I mean by being patient is taking smarter fights. That means the early game fights, end game fights, or if you have a great third party opportunity. Knowing when to strategically disengage a fight and zero in, zeroing in on these opportunities is the most important. I made it to Masters again this split and there were so many games I didn't have KP until I made it to the top 5. Now a lot of this is playstyle, and there were some games I had max KP before getting into the top 10. But my team valued position and consistency on being in the top 5 to gain RP over everything else. But if you're patient and you make decisions with a better and clear mind, you will have better results. A lot of teams forget that when there are 7 or 8 teams in the last couple rings, you will get your KP. It will come. And a lot of times it's easier to get KP this way rather than trying to take every single fight or whenever you hear gunshots, just charge over and try to fight those. And then you end up getting third or fourth partied and eliminated. When you apply this logic, you will become more consistent in your games and play style, which will give you consistent results. Remember, guys, positive KP is better than negative KP every time. It all adds up. The last topic in this video is team composition. If you made it this far, you will have all the tools to reach your desired ranked, and the biggest issue in ranked or high-level play is your team comp. I'm always shocked in Master and Pred lobbies when I see a Loba, a Rampart, or even that crappy, crappy Legend Mirage. Now, I'm not saying you can't win or play in these lobbies with these Legends, but in higher level lobbies, team comps will always be better and always win most of the time when it comes to team fights. So what team comps are good and ranked? A lot of this discussion needs another video, but the current meta, even after the Caustic event, is the following, guys. Gibby, Caustic, Bloodhound, Wraith, and Horizon. Now, I'm very curious to see what other legends get into this new meta, but great ones to use are the Octane and Rev push. That is a great combination together. And now we have Watson and Pathfinder getting a shot into the meta with their recent buffs from the Caustic event. 
The fact is too many players like to use their legend and which is all well and good, but if you're hard stuck gold, platinum, or a low level diamond player, then I consider getting a team and using a team comp to reach the higher levels. My team used the following composition, Horizon, Gibby, and Bloodhound, which you've seen in the gameplay in the background, which is where we made Masters slash Pred in this first split. Thank you guys so much for watching today's tips video to gain RP and ranked. I hope this video really does help you out before the end of the split in Season 8, which ends next Tuesday. If you enjoy these tips and tricks videos on the channel, make sure to slap that like button. Let me know down in the comments what rank you are and what goals you have for the end of the split or end of season eight. And if you're new here and want to improve your gameplay, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys so much. And as always, for me, Warlug, stay gaming and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.